So according to Kinemon's infinite fashion wisdom, the popular attire for the civilians of Dressrosa is that men are dressed in collared shirts, generally accompanied by a nice schmick pair of suit pants, a jacket, and some matching shoes. Meanwhile, the prevailing fashion for women on Dressrosa is to be scantily clad in YouTube subscribe buttons, which at the very least does allow every woman on the island to subscribe to the Grand Line Review and receive regular One Piece content uploaded straight into their YouTube feeds. And really, when you put it like that, I kind of pity the men, to be honest. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are going to be delving into a fruit that I suspect is not widely known to actually be a devil fruit amongst the fan base, being the clothing generating machine that is the Fuku Fuku no Mi. The Fuku Fuku no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to craft clothing out of everyday natural objects, such as leaves or stones, simply by visualizing their form. So it's another fruit on the more bizarre scale this time around, and it matches its user quite perfectly, being the samurai Kinemon, and the Fuku Fuku no Mi's abilities were first displayed to us during the Punk Hazard arc. This fruit takes its name from the Japanese word Fuku, very simply meaning clothing. And this is another one of those scenarios where seasoned general anime veterans should immediately recognize this word as it forms various parts of other common words, such as a seifuku, a common type of school uniform. Now we probably have the most interesting English translation yet, and it's born from a variety of factors that we will have to go into, but in the official English translation, the Fuku Fuku no Mi is not currently recognized as a devil fruit. And so the strange power of Kinemons was instead called the Garb Garb Jutsu. And let's get that whole issue out of the way first. Yes, there is a ton of confusion surrounding Kinemons abilities because they are very much modeled after, how shall we say, certain traditional anime ninja arts. And by that, I mean that whenever he invokes the fruit's power, it does look like something out of Naruto. And to pile onto this misconception, Kinemon's fellow vassal Raizo has actual ninjutsu abilities. So for an awfully long time, and I guess still to this day, many casual fans have assumed that Kinemon, despite being a samurai and not a ninja, has access to his own form of ninjutsu. That is also despite the fact that Oda went way out of his way to have Kinemon state that he, quote, ate a strange fruit. But because Kinemon has lived his entire life on Wano, he is very much unaware of the existence of devil fruits, and he tends to consider just about everything some sort of ninjutsu jutsu or sorcery. In any case, we know far more than Kinemon himself does because his entry in the One Piece VV card data book has cleared up this issue once and for all, all but confirming him to be a fruit user, as well as giving us the Fuku Fuku no Mi name. Great, now let's actually talk about it. Now this fruit is actually quite famous on this channel for making its way onto both of my incarnations of the top five worst devil fruits list. And I currently stand by that decision because this fruit is strange, specific, and comes with a butt ton of limitations. But let's start with the fantastical because the Fuku Fuku no Mi is actually pretty cool, allowing you to instantly change your attire or the attire of those around you, provided that you have a handy rock or leaf nearby. And you need either one rock or one leaf per person, actually, or I should say per outfit. One rock or leaf will grant you anything from a basic potato sack to the most grand outfit that the user can imagine. And also, yeah, this fruit probably is not restricted to using rocks or leaves specifically. And I guess it could be any small objects or maybe objects in general, perhaps literally any objects that aren't sea stone, I suppose, but they do appear to need to sit on the head of the target. So something too heavy probably is not a great idea. Now, as far as what constitutes clothing, that is also incredibly vague. At the moment, the kind of attire that can be generated seems to be limited purely by a single factor, ever the hypothetical user of the fruit can imagine. And in this regard, Kinemon has shown that it is possible to craft battle armor and even weapons from this fruit's ability. The key to everything is imagination. And so this fruit, in this respect anyway, is only limited to the imagination of the user. And a lot of people have commented on my worst devil fruits list, signaling that this could mean that the user could essentially make some sort of Iron Man armor or something along those lines. And I think that is true to a degree. However, without the scientific understanding of how such a suit works, and let's be clear, in reality it doesn't, then I think you would just end up encasing yourself in some fantastic non-functional cosplay. However, in the context of One Piece, this could come to fruition, although it would have to be in the hands of someone with exceptional robotics knowledge, which in the One Piece world would either be Frankie or Dr. Vegapunk. If either of them had this fruit, then I would have no doubt that they could make some sort of Iron Man armor, or perhaps creations even more impressive. In the hands of Kinemon or your average person, though, yeah, not so much. Now to the big detracting factor though, which is that the clothing crafted by the Fuku Fuku no Mi only remains in existence for as long as it is worn, which means that in theory, when the user takes the clothing off, it vanishes from existence, immediately reverting to whatever object it once was. So for example, during the Wano arc where Nami for reasons decided to take a bath while she, Shinobu and Robin should have been on high alert, this action of clothing removal dispelled Kinemon's abilities and she was assumedly forced to acquire clothing from, look, I don't actually know, it just sort of 
have appeared. But the point is that this concept very much removes any long-term benefit of the Fuku Fuku no Mi, because if the outfits were permanent, then this would be pretty damn phenomenal. Give it to an aspiring fashion designer, mass produce exceptional clothing out of rocks, and bam, easy global business right there. Sadly, that is not the case though, and everything to do with this fruit only operates on a temporary basis. So with that in mind, how exactly does Kinemon make use of his garb jutsu? Well, he's actually a very practical guy, and this power came in very, very handy on Pankazid when he was able to create warm coats for everyone to move about on the icy hellscape. And furthermore, when the crew arrived on Wano, it also fell to Kinemon to craft some authentic wear to allow the straw hats to comfortably traverse the nation without raising too many eyebrows. And I think that this situation in particular shows that Kinemon does possess a pretty powerful imagination and is a pretty decent user of the fruit, being instantly capable of conjuring all sorts of complex yet appropriate design choices, such as turning Brooke into a stereotypical ghost, complete with penetrating arrows and everything. But Kinemon is, how shall we say, not afraid to use this devil fruit to achieve his own personal desires, with Nami, in this case, ending up dressed as a particularly revealing and alluring Kunoichi. So honestly, I feel like it's safe to say that Kinemon, in regards to creating outfits, is almost a perfect reflection of Echiro Oda himself. He has an amazing mind for costume design with intricate detail and all sorts of grand choices, so well, he just likes to see a bit more of the old legs of the ladies. And in fact, I'm not actually sure if that part of Nami is still her leg, though no, that's definite upper thigh. In fact, it's almost her waist. But all of these disguises did see the straw hats through at least the first act of Wano, and therein lies Kinemon's primary fantastic use of the Fuku Fuku no Mi, which is to create disguises for both allies and himself. And a lot of the more memorable examples of this do come from the Dress Rosa arc, where Kinemon decided for the sake of stealth that he was going to disguise Luffy, Zoro, and himself as a giant fish, cat, and frog respectively. And to his credit, it kind of worked, with the only person I remember raising suspicion being Viola. But to be fair, she can see through practically anything. But Kinemon's incredible magnum opus came in the form of disguising himself as Warlord of the Sea, Don Quixote do Flamingo, which was actually able to fool a member of the Don Quixote Pirates, and I think you can see why. In fact, you might be wondering why I've put up two pictures of Doflamingo here. Well, it's to prove a point and prepare to have your mind blown because one of these pictures is actually Kinemon in disguise. And I just dare you to try and figure out which one it is. They're the same picture. Onwards to awakening speculation here, and my initial thought is a very simple one. Basically, unlock an ability to make conjure clothing permanent. That alone would massively increase the appeal of this fruit, and honestly remove it from my impression as one of the worst in the series. Another option though might be to affect the environment by granting the user the ability to turn various objects into clothing without needing someone to wear said clothing. So for example, if you were stuck in a cave and a pesky boulder was blocking your path, then you could just use your abilities to turn that boulder into a snazzy pair of jeans. Now wouldn't that be nice? But but otherwise, the Fuku Fuku no Mi is a bit of a weird one to think about because technically it does already affect your environment with its requirements of needing to turn objects into clothing. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a clothing human. With what we know of the fruit right now, there are some unfortunate conditions that very much hard counter its abilities because it does run off of fuel, which are very small objects. So if the user were to be imprisoned in a very bland minimalist room with no objects, then they would be in a pretty rough situation. However, for the most part, that is an extreme scenario and there should more often than not always be something around to use. Piggybacking off the awakening idea though, it's actually unknown if Kinemon can produce clothing on its own or if he needs a living mannequin to dress before bringing them into existence. However, given that the clothes vanish when not worn, it would seem unlikely, or I guess technically possible, but then he would create the clothes and they would just immediately disappear after being conjured because they're there and then they feel like they're off. And, bleh. and something I touched on much earlier, but didn't really expand on is that to some degree, the user of this fruit is also capable of crafting weapons. So long as they adorn part of the target's outfit. So that is actually a pretty big deal because you know, that could be basic blades, guns, or really anything you could think of that could be stored in a sheath, holster, or some sort of clothing related cache. And if the user's imagination was good enough, then maybe they could even craft amazing items such as Mato grade swords. And look, in reality, this could be a nice ability to have. However, just remember that if you are caught in an emergency situation, you will still need to take the time to find a small object, pop it on your head, envision your needs, and then activate the power. So I don't think this fruit really responds well to most like emergency situations. So in the end, what we have is a nifty Paramecia with quite a bit of general utility, at least in reality. I'm still not convinced on it in regards to the One Piece world, but the 
Fuk Fuku no Mi really is more of a novelty fruit anyway. It's fun and mostly practical, but it is nowhere near as life changing as I'd argue 99% of other devil fruit powers out there. The only way I can see the Fuku Fuku no Mi making a huge impact is if it were in the hands of a being with superbly advanced mechanical knowledge, and then maybe, yeah, we can make that whole Iron Man idea happen. Although another great scenario in the real world might be to give this fruit to a costume designer for theater or film, although given the amount of ridiculous quick costume changes in musical theater, then this fruit may even end up being quite impractical there. I guess you would just need to keep generating the costumes and it's like, ugh. You'd really need like multiple people with multiple Fuku Fuku no Mi's. So yeah, it's not entirely practical. Might be good for concept design though. But another option would be to put the fruit in the hands of a cosplayer. Although most cosplayers I know take great pride in the work that they put into their outfits. So the Fuku Fuku no Mi is kind of like cheating in that regard. And then when you think about this fruit in the hands of the average person, it may very well end up performing at a far below average level. I mean, I tend to give Kinema a lot of crap for not understanding the world around him, but the man is undeniably a pretty great fashion designer, especially given the minimal knowledge of the world that he does have. He creates unique and generally stylish gear, and most human beings are simply not capable of that. So we would be left with some very limited use here, and so I think that I would probably pass on this one. But with that, we are going to commit the Fuku Fuku no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. And next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have a very unique and interesting existence, being an aquatic zoan fruit that was quote unquote, eaten by a poisonous weapon of mass destruction, being the Sara Sara no Mi. But what do you guys think of the Fuku Fuku no Mi? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.